I see. 
ashes in the wind. So say on to my old friend, burden and bitterness, you can't just keep it moving. You ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you save my soul. That's where what son has found his way back home. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart, he changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. I'm going to tell you something right now. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. Listen to this. Can't rest another one. I am free. Yeah. I am free. I am free. Come on. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. Are you free? I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Nigerians, we heard grave and they said God forbid. But that's what we're telling you. Get up out of that grave. Whatever it is that is putting you down in there, I don't care about the sickness, I don't care about the disease, whatever it is, you tell that thing, tell your life, say get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave. Come on. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Speak to your problems this morning. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Because he picked me up and turned me around. 
get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. grave all glory to him bless bless him father we thank you be that way exalted in jesus name amen isaiah 54 verse 8 isaiah chapter 54 verse 8 in a little rot i hid my face from thee for a moment but with everlasting kindness will i have mercy on thee say the lord thy redeemer I want us to worship the Lord from the bottom of our hearts. I want us to appreciate him. He said for a little, he will hide himself in wrath, just for a moment. But his loving kindness, his everlasting loving kindness, will he have mercy upon us because he's our redeemer. I want us to appreciate him this morning for his kindness. We are in the most of God's kindness. I want you to give him glory. Worship him for his mercy. I appreciate him. He's our redeemer. He didn't us from the cause of sin and death. He is a great God. I appreciate him. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. He may alone is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be glorified. He is almighty God. He did not change. He does not repent. He never sleep nor slumber. He is the God. A covenant keeping God. I appreciate him. For this is our jubilee. Give all the glory for a new dawn. Give all Lord, operation. Father, we worship you. We thank you, everlasting Father. We are grateful unto you for the work of your hand. We bless you for sustaining us. We appreciate you for lifting us up, everlasting Father. We thank you, everlasting Father, for who you are, our mentor, our director, the one that cried for ourselves, the one that was crucified, that we might have life. While we are here sinners, you send Jesus Christ to redeem us. We are grateful unto to you for raising every hand written that have been written against us. We say thank you. Thank you, everlasting Father. We are grateful. Thank you for a brand new day. Thank you for a brand new week. Thank you for a brand new month. What a great God. What a faithful God. We are partakers of your faithfulness. Therefore, this morning, we say thank you. Let the name be glorified. Thank you, wonderful Father. We give you the highest praise for we worship with us in Jesus' name. Amen. The same Isaiah 54, verse 10. Isaiah 54, verse 10. He said, For the mountain shall depart, and the hills shall be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from, from, the, from you, and my covenant of peace will not be removed, say the Lord, for the Lord that have mercy on you. And he say his kindness will not depart from the Almighty God. Begin to thank God, Father, let your kindness not depart from me. Father, let your mercy not depart from me. As we are in the months of God's kindness, if God cannot depart from you, what can you achieve? How far will it go? The breath you have today is because of his kindness, because of his compassion. Father God, we are crying upon you. Let your kindness let your mercy, let your compassion not depart from the church of God, not depart from your children. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, everlasting Father, we are called by your name, Jehovah God, our chief cornerstone, our director, my Lord and my Savior. Father, we cry for your kindness, for your mercy upon our life, upon Jehovah God, that we will not be slain, that we will not fall by the wayside. 
Father, my Lord, we thank you. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to your holy name. All adoration to your name. We give you the highest praise for you reign and you rule forevermore. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus, my name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you. Everlasting Father, we appreciate you. What an awesome God you are. What a faithful God. A God that keeps his covenant. God of impossibility. We are grateful unto you this morning. For when we look back, Jehovah God, for where you have brought us, for where we are today, how you place our feet on a solid rock that we are not shaking. Father, we thank you for the church of God. For the last 25 years, you have been faithful in our life, in the life of the church of God, we thank you for all you have done and what you are still doing and what you are yet to do. We give you the highest praise. And this morning, Jehovah God, we say, Be that we exalted. We have gathered once again, Jehovah God, to receive from you this morning. Father, strength, ability. We have come everlasting, Father, to renew our hope, to renew our faith. Therefore, this morning, we pray, Jehovah God, your grace shall abide in us, shall be made available for us. In the name of Jesus, your word of God is. Jehovah God, we come, we pray this morning, you sent your word to that man, to that woman that need to be healed, that need to be delivered, that need to be comforted. Let your word go first. Let the word not be Easter guest. Father, all we need is your word. Send your word this morning and we'll be glad. Thank you, everlasting Father. Let your name be glorified for you pray with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Because you are about to do a new thing in our lives. Because you are going to turn around everything that is bad in our lives, you will turn them around for good. In the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, come and do your wonder things are here. Let your name be praised. Father, we thank you. Please receive us as we are, as living sacrifices unto you, holy and acceptable in your sight. And let your name alone be praised today. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we are praying. If you are happy to be alive and you are here this morning, or you are watching us online, you are worshiping with us online, shout a big hallelujah. It is our prayer that this morning the Lord will turn everything around for your good in the mighty name of Jesus. Please be seated in his presence. Thank you, choir. Before we go into the message of today, we want to recognize those worshiping with us for the first time. Please, if you are here worshiping with us for the first time, can you raise up your hand so that we can recognize you? Today is your first day of worshiping with us in this uh, place. All right. Thank you. The Lord bless you. We want to say one more thing. Please, you will reset the time for me. We want to say that we are grateful to God that we're able to see you all here today. And the only thing that, the reason that you are here today is God has given you breath of life. And if you are happy for that, shout a good hallelujah. hallelujah. Today is also uh, Thanksgiving Sunday. 
And if you are born in the month of June, please raise up your hand so that we can recognize you. June? June, 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 June. The Lord will visit you today in the name of Jesus. If you are not born in June, don't worry. He will also visit you pleasantly in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm excited to be in church this morning because you remember last uh, Sunday or so, or Sunday before, we prayed for a couple that were going to get married and they are in the midst of the brethren today to do their thanksgiving. So you are trusting God for a life partner, you will tap into this during the time of thanksgiving and the almighty God will answer you in Jesus name. Today is a wonderful day and believe me I'm really very excited this month. You know why? You and I, we are going to receive the kindness of God. Amen. You know, when God loves someone, he releases his kindness to him. And this morning, we are going to be sharing on the word. Thank, just a minute. Give thanks for God's kindness. Give thanks for God's kindness. This month has been themed God's kindness. And we're going to be taking our text from 2 Samuel chapter 9. I'll just read 1 to 4 and skip 2 Samuel 9, 1 to 4. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And that was of the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they called, when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Are thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Maka, the son of Amiel, in Lodibar. Let's read verse 6. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he said, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest, shouldest look upon him, upon such a dog as I am? May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. See, Mephibosheth was the grandson of Saul, King Saul, the first king of Israel. And at this point, while they were running during the war, the servant that was carrying the baby dropped him and invariably became paralyzed. But when God's mercy and kindness was coming, God put it in the hearts of David the king that this man, Jonathan, who was your friend, who was the father of this one, you made a covenant with him while he was alive. And the Lord reminded him, and that's why I was yearning, yearning to, to show kindness of God, not his own kindness, but the kindness of God. This man was in a place, he was helpless. Mephibosheth was helpless. In a place of poverty. In a place where nobody recognized him as the son of the king. But when God's kindness came, he turned everything around for his, for his good. And I'm praying for you this day. The Lord will turn everything around for your good. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Mephibosheth was in a place where they call no bar. It's a place of poverty. It's a place where nobody will recognize you. But this man, when kind of a kindness of God met him, he was moved to limelight. And he became an employer of labor. Because if you read further, the, the king said, after re restoring the land that belongs to his father and all the properties, he told Ziba, the servant, you, from today, you work for this man. And Ziba had 15 children or so, and uh, so many other, and also some servants. And apparently, this man, who was lame, who didn't have any opportunity, began to do business, and this man, this Ziba was serving him. About 36 people became his employees. And I'm praying for you. Maybe you have been trusting God that you want to start your own business. The Lord will show you kindness. Amen. And you will begin to think and he will give you wisdom on what to do. In the name of Jesus. And you will be profitable in every aspect of your life in the name of Jesus. Jonathan received kindness of God. And he received timely help. Because the help was timely. He was forgotten. Now he was remembered. You have been forgotten, you will be remembered. In the name of Jesus. God will lay it in the hands, hearts of some people. What your parents or your grandparents they have done, the kindness they have done for someone. And then they will remember you and start to bless you. And you will also be a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing will be able to disturb you. In the name of Jesus. You know, we heard about the story of a man who was a servant, you know, who was a messenger. At a, at a gathering like this, that the GO, our general overseer, mentioned that by this time next year, somebody who is a messenger here will become a landlord. And by the grace of God, thank you, you will become your landlord too, in the name of Jesus. He became a landlord because when he got to, this was the end of the year, crossing overnight. And the moment he got to the office, he greeted his MD. The MD said, do you have a house at all? And the MD said, I have extra house, which I won from the state, and I wouldn't need it. Maybe about four bedroom uh, uh, building. And he gave him the keys. Not only that, the man came again to, to say thank you. The man asked, the MD asked, by the way, do you have any furniture? The man said, no. He said, don't worry. Kindness of God is upon you. Amen. Therefore, the, 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 the furniture I've been using last year, I will be replacing it. And he called his driver to drive this man and go and bring the furniture and furnish the house. Amen. That is how God's kindness works. And it will work for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The word kindness is defined as a quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. It's also the quality of being kind to treat someone with kindness and consideration. Kindness is also a kind deed, favor. Kindness is not supposed to be something we express only when we feel like it. God is merciful and is full of mercy and full of kindness. You know, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, 1 to 11, Acts 3, 1 to 11, that was the case of this beggar at the gate, beautiful. And the day the kindness of God was going to locate him, Peter was going with John to pray in the temple. And then suddenly, he was expecting some money. Peter said instead, he said, I don't have money, I don't have anything, but I have the name of Jesus. And as such, I, I, pray, I pray for you that you will rise up now and stand up in the name of Jesus. And that same moment, strength came to the leg of this man. And Peter pulled him up. The ankle bones received strength. I pray for you will receive strength in this season. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And he started walking, leaping, and praising God. I'm praying for someone here. After this service, you start leaping and walking and praising God. 
Because the kindness of God will locate you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, just tell somebody, it's my time to dance and praise God. It's my time. And God will make it to be in Jesus' name. One other example that you will see in the scriptures is Paul in the island of Melitia. He said he was going to Rome. That's in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, 1 to 7. He was going to Rome. The boat met with uh, resistance because of the tempestuous uh, uh, storm. And it was broken. And they ended up going to this island. And Paul received kindness from the governor of that place. That the man fed him for three days. He was living with this man. And God used him to also raise the father of this man from sickness. I pray for you. If there's any sickness in your life, the almighty God will send help to you. Amen. And today, you will rise up. Amen. And God will do wonders for you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in Luke chapter 7, Luke 7, 12 to 16, Luke 7, 12 to 16, Jesus showed up with God's kindness. The woman who was going to bury her only son in Nain, in the city called Nain. They were going to bury him, the only son. And Jesus met them and said, just stay right there. I'm going to turn your sorrow to joy. And that's what he's going to do for someone here today. Amen. You have sorrow in your heart. You know, sometimes when you are sorrowful, you can't tell anybody. I've been in situations whereby it, when church first started in, the, in 1998, that I will get to a place of prayer. I will not be able to pray because somebody has hurt me. And then the only thing I would do is just kneel down there. That was 25 years ago. Kneel down at the place of prayer. I couldn't pray, but I would be crying. And God will suddenly show up and say, my son, don't worry. I'll take care of it. And that was what God was doing. Why? Because of the kindness of God that God has planted upon this church. And I'm happy for all of you to be here during this 25th anniversary. The main reason is this. God has positioned you here so that your former life will not be as good as the present and as the future life because the latter end of your life will be better than your former. In the name of Jesus. The theme for our anniversary, 25th anniversary, is the glory of the latter house. And when you see the glory of God, you know, when it manifests, it does a lot of good things. But today is not the time to discuss about that. By the grace of God, this week, we'll be hearing a lot about that. And God has prepared a man who God gave the vision to, to send us out to start this church where we are brother, a brother and a sister. And God has maintained this church because of people like you. There were some people that were here at that time, at the initial stage. Fifteen people gathered together to start the church. And by the grace of God, this church grew up to be a zonal a zona and also a provincial headquarters. And by the grace of God, from clap for Jesus. And by the grace of God, you know, we have three provincial, uh, pro, uh, provincial headquarters that came out from this place. And we have about uh, seven or eight uh, zonal headquarters and so many other parishes, even in Dominican Republic, even in South America, to the glory of God. It's why? Because of God's kindness. And you must remember that you are in the position to receive that today, that God has promised and he's going to show us this uh, kindness throughout our lifetime in the name of Jesus. From this month onwards, in the name of Jesus, I have that belief that God is doing something new. And I have the belief that this is your season in which God will locate people around to show you kindness. In the name of Jesus, God will do great things for you. You know, Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings 3, 3 to 7, Solomon, the Bible says, he loved the Lord, walking in the statues of the father, David. 
And then that day, he made a great sac sacrifice, born sacrifice, thousands of them. You know, something must be in his heart. Why he decided to thank God? Why he decided to do that? And the reason is shown somewhere in that same scriptures that the, the verse 4, it says, And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. And for, for that was the great place, high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. But when you skip to verse 6, it says, And Solomon said, Thou hast shown my father unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. Please let us listen to the word of God. Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my great mercy, thy great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. Thou hast kept for him this great kindness, 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 that thou hast given him a son to sit on his, his throne. And this guy that was sitting on the throne, he says, for I am but a little child. I don't know how to go out or come in. He was having a dream. After that, God showed up. He started having this dream. He discussed with God to tell him that God really loved him because, he, because of the kindness God was showing to his father and allowed him to be the king instead of his, late, his father that has died. I'm praying for you. God will remember you. God will grant you your heart's desires. In this season, in Jesus' name, he will remember you for good. And things that you think is not possible for you to achieve, you will begin to achieve. You know, many a times, we have slept in different places. Many a times, we have walked in different grounds. Many a times, you have gone astray. You go in direction that you don't even know why you are going. You are just following after some people. But God, in his infinite mercy, because of his kindness, he brought you back. You know, let me tell you the story of myself. I used to be a person that loved to drink alcohol. I, I love every time you see me around. I'm not drunk. I wasn't drunk. But I love being in the company of my friends. I would drink and drink from 2, a, 2 p.m. after we go for, we would go for break. We would drink. We would smoke. And then I was destroying my health. I didn't know. I was destroying my family. I didn't know. But I thought I was having life, enjoying life. But because of the kindness of God upon my, my wife and the children, God took me out from that group. And he made me to be somebody else. And I pray for you. Maybe your child is giving you trouble. The Lord will draw him back. He will come back to his senses like the prodigal son. Because I came back to my senses. If I didn't, I wouldn't have achieved what I'm achieving by his grace. You know, with PhD in animal science, you wake up, you go to work, and then you end up with, uh, I won't call them fools, because they thought they were the ones that were very knowledgeable. Because when you're on table, you discuss politics, and you think you are the best in the whole world. Not knowing that you are just fooling yourself because of the alcohol in the system. I want to thank God that God found me. And I'm sure there are some of you God found you too. If you are not found, shout hallelujah. You see, if you are found, shout a big hallelujah. You know, it's good that God found you. And you know, when you look through the scriptures, if you look at Romans chapter 5, I think I have it somewhere here. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 8. If you can project it for me, I will I will be glad. You know, what we received is just the mercy of God. The kindness of God took everyone from the merry clay of this world and set us in a better place. You know, the Bible, not, I said Romans, not Proverbs. Anyway, I've summarized the whole thing. 
But what is there is that God loves us so much that nothing can take us for, away from his love. Let me read what I have here. It says, but God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, God didn't say because you are a sinner. I cannot allow, I wouldn't allow my son to die to redeem you from your wicked ways. He, had, he let it go. And you know, that's the biggest problems we are making in families these days. People just decide to hate their husband or their wife for no reason. But they don't know that it's the devil that is at work. Because the Bible tells me that he who finds a wife finds a, a good thing. You know, women are good things. Yeah, you are welcome. They are good things. And don't, don't, not only that, men too, they are treasures to God. Amen. You know? So you, can, you must always look at yourself from that perspective. That God has loved you to the point that he gave you a wife. A wife. From one family, he has brought him to your own family. And when, he gets you, when she gets your own family, you are supposed to love her. Begin to love her, show her kindness, put her on a, on a good pad, uh, pedestal. You know, you see my wife, how she's looking. <laughs> 52 years of marriage. Amen. Not that we don't quarrel, not that we don't fight, but the, the mercy of God, the kindness of God has always been there, protecting us, watching over us, to see that we don't go in the wrong direction. If you have been going in the wrong direction, tra retrace yourself. God can do much better for you in your family. As long as you are together as one. The devil doesn't want you to be one. But God, he loves you to the point that he even gave his only begotten son. So why, when you believe him, you won't go astray. You will have even everlasting life. That's what he promised, he promised in uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. So God really loves all of us, and that's why we are here today. And I pray that you will not lose the companion of God Amen. and the brethren in Jesus' name. Amen. God so much loved us. And because he loved us, he's going to work things out for us for our good. Amen. That's his promise. He says, why you are here, sinners, Christ died for us. And not only that, when he died for us, there are things that he did for us on the cross. He took our sins and nailed it to the cross. So that nobody can accuse you again that you're a sinner. You know, nobody. When I, when I gave up drinking and I gave up my, I became born again, when I would see some of my old friends, they would say, ah, this man is a gentleman. Another one would say, no, not only gentleman, reverend gentleman. You know, I don't know how when I became reverend at that time, but they said, this is a reverend gentleman. You know, in the church of God too, when I was in my local church, thank God one of the ministers here happened to be one of my students there. You can see a beautifully dressed woman. Pastor Victoria Equile. We grew up together in that church. I was leading them as the elders this and also teaching them in Sunday school and uh, uh, what do you call it, workers in training. But to the glory of God, I am proud to be associated with her. You know why? Because she's, she, she, she received kindness of God and started running with it. And that's what God is expecting for all of us here. Not that all of us will be pastors. But we will be able to do the work of God the way he wants it done. We'll be able to say, indeed, God has been my help. God has put me in the, right pers in the right perspective of life. Life is difficult. But for a child of God, God will be there showing mercy, showing kindness. And he will return things to the better perspective. You know, Jonah was really in a serious mess. He was asked to go and uh, preach the gospel. He argued with God and ran away. But when he found himself in the belly of a fish, he said something in Jonah chapter 4, verse 2, 2 and 3. Let me read the latter part. 
says, therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, talking about God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. You see, he was condemning that uh, Nineveh to the point that he, don't, he didn't want God to come there to save them. He expected that these evil people should be destroyed. And that's why, that is what many of us have in our minds. When you look at the neighbor, you know, well, instead of looking at that neighbor with kindness, you are looking, oh, this is a sinner. I should not associate myself with him. I should not do anything with him. And then you condemn him. You don't even know what some people are going through sometimes. But you will just say something against them. But God will deliver you. So that you will know that everybody is enjoying God's mercy and kindness. Because Jesus died for all of us. He died for us. He redeemed us and called us to serve him. He has made us ambassadors. And I pray that Lord God Almighty will use you mightily to take good news somewhere and you'll be able to thank the Almighty God. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 31, Jeremiah 31, 3 to 4, talks about when you thank God, for, you must thank him for loving you with his everlasting life, uh, arm, and love. Jeremiah 31, 3 to 4 says, The Lord hath appeared unto, of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee, and I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with tambourines, and shalt go forth in dances of them that make merry. That means you will be making merry very soon. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. God has a plan. You know, the woman of God that uh, led us in opening prayer read this Bible passage. Uh, Isaiah chapter 54. And stress that aspect. It says, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, said the Lord, that had mercy on thee. So God has mercy on all of us. That's why we are here. You know, one day this man slept, the king slept, and remember he couldn't sleep that day, not knowing it was God's mercy that wanted to appoint Mordecai to a place that he can, he can do wonders for God. The king couldn't sleep. Second Kings chapter six, one to sorry, Esther chapter six, one to ten. I pray for you, people to help you, to get you to the next higher level. Will not sleep until they remember you. In the name of Jesus, you have been struggling and toiling and doing what all you can, but there is no no breakthroughs. I'm telling you by the grace of God, God's kindness will locate you and will give you a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up even today. Maybe next time we'll be talking about other things. But let's rise up even at this time. Let's just appreciate God for his kindness. Let's thank him for keeping you alive. You are going on, on the street, people are knocked down. You go into the mall and then you find out that people have been shot. But he didn't, they didn't shoot you. Why don't you go ahead and thank God? In the last six months, we've been hearing a lot of things. The last five months, talk to him that God, please accept my thanks for watching over me, for watching over my family, for putting them in the right perspective of life. Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you for my family. Thank you. You have not allowed the enemy to break us up. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the job that I have. Thank you, thank you for my health. Talk to him. Thank you. And if you are there, you have not given your life to Christ, that means you have not associated with you with him. Oh, just 
raise up your hand you want to accept jesus as your as your lord and savior the opportunity is in the house is in the house is in the house so that the lord will do new things in your life oh thank you thank you lord thank you for my salvation thank you for the soul that you saved from hell i was going through to hell but you called me back thank you thank you thank you thank you for your faithfulness thank you for your loving kindness thank you thank you thank you for the church of god that continues to march on thank you even though those things didn't match on well, but yet you are still doing it thank you father we just want to say thank you thank you for all that you have done for us thank you thank you you did not allow us to go astray you have not allowed us to go to be begging thank you father we thank you blessed be your holy name oh thank you for your kindness thank you thank you thank you that this month is a special month for all of us thank you thank you blessed be your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray the lord bless you all thank you for being there now let me just say something i'll finish the, the word has finished so please sit down this is not a message at this time what i'm about to say is just to say to all of you we want to say thank you because we cannot but thank you for the anniversary that is on in particular i want to thank the uh the anniversary committee they are doing a great thing the wonderful team cry for jesus cry for jesus while all of us are sleeping they were still working i can see some of them texting me in the middle of the night amen just not that they wanted me to know they are working but they probably need one information or the other and we will provide but i want to say thank you more so to all of you for your contributions you are not forced to give towards the anniversary but you have done excellently you know so yes please clap for yourself you know you are doing you've done a great job and i want to thank all of you because without god putting it in your heart to do it you won't do it amen the reason i'm sure is this you know this this last week i just saw I just received a message from our, our church in the Dominican Republic. You know, they were expecting us to buy a building which we, are, we were using. And one way or the other, the owner just came because we haven't bought the place. Just drove them out, took up and threw all our things outside. But I know God that we saw showed us kindness. Because immediately, they, by the time they were calling me, somebody gave them a new place which is very small. But at the same time, we still know by God's grace we are going to purchase that building in the name of Jesus. Because God planted us there. And we've started doing some things inside there. And when it is time, God will locate us back there. So please be praying for the missionaries out there that the Lord will be with them. The Lord will not let them get discouraged in the name of Jesus. But I still say thank you. And also, also to the partners, we say thank you. Because you are doing a great job. And the Almighty God will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. I want you to know that there's nothing you contribute that the Lord will not put in your account in heaven. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. And this week is going to be a glorious week. How many of you have purchased your dinner ticket? Only a few. Ah. Please let us know on time because it's going to be on Saturday. We all want to go, we all want to be together to celebrate 25 years of God's faithfulness. It's not only by jumping up, but just to say, God, I appreciate these people that are sitting with me here at this table. You know, Jesus had a dinner with his, his uh, disciples. All right? So he's expecting you to be part of that. And I know I've been hearing it said, take time off. You need to take time off. Please go and take your time off to celebrate the goodness of God in your life, in this church, for the last 25 years. And you know, it says the latter, the glory of the latter house will be greater. I know for sure it's going to do great things for you in this coming year. 
and beyond in Jesus name things will fall in place in pleasant places for all of you thank you the Lord bless you we will keep on praying for you please also remember us in your prayers God bless you sorry during the Thanksgiving we will be taking uh, the occasionals as well and their family and the people that are celebrating their birthdays in the month of June God bless you all offerings right now and uh, let's begin to package our offerings um, into our envelopes and we also have the um, online means to give our offerings um, we can use the cash app we can use the tightly you can use you can mail a check uh, to the address here I want to read first Kings chapter chapter 17 verse 14 it says, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. I want you to begin to pray that as I give my offering to God, let not the barrel of my meal waste, and neither shall the cruise of my oil fail. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Hallelujah. My love has taken over me. Father, I depend on you. I have confidence in you. In you alone.
Father, we thank you for today. We thank you because of your spirit in the temple. We thank you because of your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your provision. We say be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we have given unto you, we are asking that you accept our sacrifices of praise in the name of Jesus. And we are asking that you send down many blessings in multiple folds in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you always hear us. In Jesus' unfailing name we have prayed. Amen. At 316 Upham Street, Melrose, stands a beacon of faith and unity, our beloved RCCG Coniston Worship Center for All Nations. For 25 years, under the leadership of Pastor Samuel and Pastor Debbie Shorimade, we've been more than just a church, we've been a family. Now it's time to celebrate this remarkable journey. Join us from June 8th to June 11th as we celebrate our 25th anniversary. From Praise Jamboree to a grand anniversary dinner, we've planned four days of joy, fellowship and celebration. With special ministration by Pastor Brown Oyesho. something in you that the world needs before the end of this service, even as the oil touches your head, that thing in you is going to come out in the name of Jesus. There's something in you that the world needs. I want you to leave this. And several worship and praise ministers, we invite you to be a part of our family, to celebrate the past, embrace the present, and look forward to the future. No power of your own, I don't have power of my own, but we're asking the Holy Spirit to do what He's able to do. Spirit of the living. I was shocked when I saw myself. I was very shocked. That I didn't know I've changed. Oh my God. Ah, there is blessing in this church, man. Ah, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, I like this. I like this. I like this. Please clap for me, man. I like this. I like this. I didn't know. Wow. Wow. Interesting. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. A round of applause for yourself. 25 years ago, I know where I was 25 years ago. But again, like I said again, I don't like to talk too much when it comes to things like this. This church has been a blessing to me. It has turned my life around from zero to 360. You may not understand, but I know I am still going to come here when I have more time to testify to what God has done. Now, 25 years, like I said again, of a church without no scandal. I was driven out of a church because my prophecy was not right. A church was, that was less than one year. They drove me out as a pastor. That is why my calling as a pastor, I gave it away. But daddy has been here for 25 years. Not one ministry, not one not two, not three, sent out ministers, and they are all obediently doing awesomely well out there. It doesn't, that, doesn't God deserve that rubber plus? Now, quickly, let me give you a snip into what is happening this week. I want the church to understand something. Whenever something has to do with a figure, 25th, 21, 17, seven always key into it i want everybody to come on thursday if you are coming many of us don't come with expectation that is the problem every time i come for administration me i want to know if god is real myself i'll say god i am coming for this so when it happens i can come out comfortably and tell you Brethren, there are something I will tell you comfortably. You may say it's boasting. That's you. I can boast of it because I know the Lord that said, I will do it and he did it. You cannot do anything to bring it down. 
Is it that you key into it or you'll be a loser? There is God here. There is God here. If you know me before and you are knowing me now, I don't need to hold the Bible to tell you there's God here. That's all I can tell you right now. My friends are going to be here. I don't need to preach too much. Again, Thursday is an only, only communion service. The man of God that is coming, if you remember very well, it is the, the one that actually opened this particular place that blessed it and said, you know what? Let it begin to be fruitful. And true, the word from his mouth, and God said, amen. 25 years later, we are still standing. COVID, as our pastor have said, have driven people out. Have you asked yourself a question? How much do you give to this church? Have you sat down and within yourself and said, how much do I give? If you do the equation of how much you give, and you think or whatever in your mind thinking that is what is sustaining this church, you will say, no, I, I give one dollar, sometimes I give a quarter. A quarter cannot amount to this. That means there is something here that whether we like it or not, without me or you, God will do what he needs to do. When I had that, I said, use me now. Because guess what? If I'm here, I am not here, you are here, you are not here, 25th is still going to come, whether you like it or not. Why don't you key into it? The man of God that is coming is coming all the way with an anointing. If you have followed the man ministry, everywhere he has been to, things never remain the same. I am not saying this for you to understand. When I got married, he was there, and he, there was a word he pronounced upon my life. Like I said again, I am not boastful. I will never beg again in my life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. But I knew there were difficulties in my family to eat three square meal. Don't be rich and become poor. We were rich, but we became poor. And God lifted someone up again. So I want you to understand the anointing this man of God is carrying. Even though it's for one hour, please. Me, I don't like jealousy, you. Because I don't want you to jealous me. Come and tap your own. It is a free entrance. Tap your own and go. But come with expectant. On Thursday, I beg of you. If you like, you meet dinner. Miss dinner, I don't care. Don't miss the Holy Communion. I don't know why I'm standing, repeating this 24 7. If you have been barring, something is going on, you have, come on that. If you are looking for a husband, come. Looking for a wife, come. The way I met my wife was a miracle. I have told you guys before. The qualification was not the same. She was too much of me. But God said, mm -mm, that is your half. And God gave me the English I spoke to her. And she said, yes. <laughs> Friday is a day you will never forget. It's on the night. Praise. I've changed things around. Ministers of God that are called me, there are testimony. I gave one the other day. I was looking for a hundred thousand dollars for my first property to develop. A sister that is coming on this day came and sang, and she prophesied through this administration and said, Someone is here, and I know God will meet you. I was right there. Me, I don't believe in Sakamaji. But on that day, I said, Whether it's Sakamaji, it's not Sakamaji, as long as it's from the altar. Mm, I claim it. Lord, behold, the next day, I'm not trying to put tribe. A Mexican guy that was about to leave the country said in his pigeon hole, you know, they keep money in their house. They release a hundred thousand dollars. Brethren, I am not, I'm at the altar here for God's sake. What will I be lying for? Song, music. Now we are doing it from six o'clock till whenever till 11 if you don't key in there was a man that came upon the altar and told you about this come and key in your blessing saturday ticket by now the seats are pretty much right now is going so fast you may not understand what is going on as we are talking to you right now 
those of you that listen to the radio, if you go in from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. in the morning, in the radio station I love so much, jamming 94.5, you will hear, DMS, DMS, they say that. After they have done, they will not say, hello. This is a wonderful week that you'll be excited about within Christian Church. Can you see how many everybody, the DMS fan that is not listening to the things of God? We purposely, strategically, mindfully targeted that audience that the enemy is taking to hell, uh, right? To bring them to Christ. Check on it from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and also from 6 p.m to 9 p.m. started already daily it will play it all through meaning that bring a soul bring a soul make sure you bring a soul now also the dinner is very important 75 dollars people are saying is that too much if you happen to win one of our raffle that is about 500 dollars i believe 75 dollars will be, will be more meaningful to you at that point correct there are gifts, food, red carpet. Oh, please, dress very well so you will not be, I don't want you to be embarrassed when you see red carpet, you'll be like, hey, red carpet, oh, red carpet. There are going to be different things happening in here. Any food you want, we have them here. What is the purpose? We want to celebrate together what? As family. If you cannot do this, and you say, I won't be around, I'm traveling, I'm this, bro, let me make it clear. At this point, I want to be blunt. If God wants to bless, he doesn't bless those that complain and give excuse. He bless those that says, even though the crowd is blocking my way, I will press through. I will try everything to be here. Brother, by five o'clock, the red carpet starts. By six, you begin to see what you have not seen before. Tickets have been sold to outsiders. They believe in what we told them. If you don't believe, like I said, I have nothing to tell you at this time. Sunday is a wonderful day for those of you that come to church sleeping. That's people that sleepwalk. Don't sleepwalk that day, because if you sleepwalk into this building on Sunday in the morning, you won't see us here. Service is in the afternoon. Please, I know most of us work 3 to 11. Call out now. It's in the afternoon from 2.30 to by, roughly by 5.36, we, we, we should be all set. Please get ready. Now, there are going to be special guests all over. If the mayor could key in and said, I will be here, the mayor of Meros is coming. Why are we members? Why do we not need to beg you? If the governor is saying, oh, I am busy, let me see if I could send you a representative. I'm not talking about governor in my household. I'm talking about governor of Massachusetts. She did not mind what the church says. I believe in your calling. If I can make it, I will send you a representative. But the mayor has confirmed already. Brethren, I don't know what to say. People are paying tickets, flying over because 25th is a unique year of God's blessing. I'm taking time so we can understand what is going on. So when the train pass, for those that catch the train, don't come and say, that church, God only bless specific people. Well, it is open. And finally, I want to end with this. With all honesty, I want to thank every member. I want to say thank you for everything. The women, God will bless you. The elders, I don't know what I would tell my mommy bank. Mommy bank, my sweet mom, very easy to work with. But your English is too much. I look at the dictionary to find what you are saying. I know you went to Harvard. You don't need to tell me that you went to Harvard. Please, I'm struggling with your English. But you, mommy bank, toile. For the men, I know it is tough, the time, but I want to say thank you. Everyone that has supported this ministry, brethren, I know what the economy says, 
But you all have not left daddy alone in this journey. This must be God. This must be true love. And I know what has bound this unity in us together, nothing will separate it. Nothing will separate it. And to my lovely teenagers and to the children downstairs, we may not see what they are doing, but the almighty God take record of it. When my son is saying, Genesis and all the Leviticus, nobody turn on me. I didn't know it before. I didn't know that. Me is not Genesis, Exodus, Peter, John. The my mother will conk me in my head and say, mm. I will say, but they, don't, they didn't conk them there. Somebody took the pain and walked them through. My father, they were telling me stories I don't even know in the Bible. My son will ask me, do you know about the leopard? I said, hmm. Ask your mom, I'm very busy right now. Is it lie? Because I didn't know. But what am I saying? Things are happening. For those of you that never believed in that department, I want to tell you today, I am very proud that any of our children can go out there and talk about Jesus. What they says is only happening in Nigeria. I'm telling you, it's happening here today. Every one of you, the engineering department, thank you. I know I've spent every time, but there's a reason for this. One more time, I will see you guys by the special grace of God on Thursday. And the men, please wait behind after uh, the service of today. Wait behind. And again, the other announcement is just going to be the uh, conversion coming in on the... Let me look at my phone again. My brain does not carry anything again. Let me see. Let's see. I think it's coming up um, on the 14th. June 14 to 16, and that will be uh, in Greenville, uh, Texas. And the team is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can you pull volume in my mic? Let me talk. see. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, Greenville, Texas. I know I've gone. Don't worry about it. We're good. So, uh, please, if you haven't bought your ticket, do that. The most important thing is please. Let's have fun and let's be expected. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Well, I promised that we'll take the testimony of uh, Brother Tun. Are you going to give your testimony here? Now, we'll take your testimony and two others. God bless you. Please come, Brother Dutton. Please come. This is before the before the Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy New Month. Um, we just wanted to give a quick testimony. I um, wanted to thank God for. You know, making our wedding a special one. Uh, we want to thank the church, we want to thank Pastor and Mommy for, for making it out for us. Um, we really appreciate all the love and all the kindness. Um, the day was definitely a very special day for Lola and I. Um, so we want to use this time to just say thank you to God and thank you for all the love and all the prayers. And um, we pray that we shall have a lot more reasons to celebrate um, in Jesus' name. Um, and we're, we're back in Boston, so we'll be, we'll be here in church. Uh, we thank God for, we just want to thank again everyone for the prayers um, and all the love. Thank you. God bless you. You can go and sit down. we we'll call you when it's time to do the dancing forward. You know, I didn't know he was a beautiful dancer. He danced himself out on that day, jumping, stretching the hand. Oh, I said, ha. Ah. And not only that, they took good care of us. Food at different times, at the point we said, don't bring food, they said, our parents will not agree. <laughs> they said, okay, chairman, please come. And thank you also. Praise God. <laughs> I, um, I hate to be an ingrate, but God has really been good to me. Um, the first testimony was about God healing me and my back. You know, a few of you have <laughs> seen 
how I struggled for almost two years, you know, I couldn't stand straight as I'm standing like this. I had surgery in October. I was out for about two months from work and even church. And each time, each month that I try to come and give the testimony, something happens or the other. The devil is a liar. You know how it is. But I have to uh, thank God for healing. You know, sometimes people think healing has to come. Every healing comes through prayers. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to do surgery before your healing comes. So the Bible says we need to be wise. You need to talk to God, go on your knees and ask God. If you need to do surgery, don't hesitate to do it. I'm happy I went for it. But it's God that healed me. It's not the surgery. It's not everybody that went through that surgery that got healed. So... The other testimony was uh, when I went home for the final sending uh, burial ceremony for my mom. I want to thank the church. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy, for your support. Thank you, Sarah, my pastor, and everybody, every one of you, the whole church. It was awesome. We were very apprehensive because uh, my mom died, I think, February, very early February, and that's the month for the election back home and you know how the, the the tension and everything and immediately after that Lent came so we couldn't do the burial until April but even then there was this no money no pay, gasoline no air no this no that you know so in the middle of all that the God was faithful God was faithful so I thank the Lord I thank you Everybody that the Lord has used as a blessing through your prayers, financial support, and everything. The Lord will reward you immensely in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. The Lord is good. Amen. All the time. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Brethren, I want to bless the name of the Lord for the salvation of my soul. And that is why I can even testify before the brethren today. I want to bless him because the past three months, actually the past three or four years of my life, I have climbed the steepest slope on earth, the steepest mountain. Even when my strength was too completely gone that my feet could no longer carry me, the Lord carried me on his shoulders. I climbed the mountain. I stood strong. I want to bless him that even the past three months has been, the, I don't know, because the devil saw he was fighting a lost battle and saw he has lost, and the devil want to make it a battle of, there is, I will just I will seek the indulgence of daddy to say it in Yoruba, that there is something they say that in our language that kakake kuma jese se se, that is, instead of, and I will translate literally, instead of a rat, <laughs> not to eat uh, something, I don't know, something they say, it was, <laughs> it will rather scatter it. And that was what the enemy wanted to do with me and my children. But the Lord said no. Because he said as long as I obey him, as long as I trust him, he said he will be with me all the way. He said I will not fall. And that was exactly what he did. I want to thank daddy. I want to thank mommy. I'm not going to say the details, but they are fathers. I don't have a living father, but they stood there for me like my father would have stood with me when he was alive. So I want to thank God. You don't know the details, but if you want to know, you will know. But I want to thank God that all through this, the Lord see me through. I was able to overcome when I fought the final battle because the enemy wanted to collect everything I have labored for. But the Lord said no. It came out in the a, in a, in a most miraculous way, even in a way that people didn't believe. And I overcame. He promised to give me pleasant surprises. I didn't know how he was going to do it. The Bible says that he uses the uh, stupid, foolish things of this earth to confound the wise, and that was what he did. Uh -huh. I stand before the brethren today, and everyone that stood with me and my family, and everyone in the church of God, people that have been praying for us, 
Even though the ways of God is not clear to the ways of the world, but, but God, God is good. It. I want to bless God and say that he is forever good. Sibe Oluwadara Boti Wukori Idama Yelepo but Sibe the Lord is good. The Lord is good no matter what. Prof. My two children graduated. I was wondering that is just one more. I was wondering what to do. I was wondering what to do with them financially, emotionally, everything, alone with two boys. But suddenly God moved again, even when they were not going to take the senior one in my campus. Eventually, they asked the two of them, free tuition. What can I say? What can I say? What can I say? Thank because Lord. I don't know I will bear it alone, but God is good. No oh, matter God. what you are going through, trust him. Trust your God. He will speak through that still, small voice. Don't listen to the runs around you, the noise mm. around you. If God is speaking, he will see you through. Praise yes. the Lord. Well, we want to thank the Almighty God. I will cover everything in the blood of Jesus. You know, this morning the Lord was giving me a song, Through It All. I didn't know we were going to hear such testimonies here. But God Almighty will be with all of you. And we will seal every testimony in the blood of Jesus. Today is a special Sunday. And we are about to call upon uh, the Almighty God. I'm going to call our daddy. If you are born in the month of June, be prepared to follow the... the to be in the front forefront along with the uh, newlywed. And then if you are alive, you follow everybody else. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Even as we will be coming to do our thanksgiving, I just want to admonish you as you come. And those of us who are celebrating our birthday, get ready. This month, we're told it's the month of God's goodness and kindness to us, God's kindness to us. I was uh, reading um, Dr. NHA's uh, daily publication. And he was talking about how ingratitude can make us not to enjoy the goodness and the kindness of God. So I want to challenge you this morning that we come with a heart of appreciation to God. I want us to package our thanksgiving and those of us who are celebrating our birthday, our wedding anniversary, I want us to join the newly wedded couple and um, our daddy too this is the month of his bed and the choir please I want daddy to you know scatter all the whole chair there <laughs> please give us a danceable song hallelujah Please let us get up. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Joy overflow in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflow in my heart. Hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will praise your name. Oh, I will worship you.
testimony that the Lord is alive in Cornerstone Worship Center. I just want us to lift up our voice and bless the name of the Lord. Great things the Lord is doing. Great things the Lord do. Great testimony we begin to hear. I just want us to just say, Father, thank you for the testimony that we had this morning. It's enough to lift us of healing. You don't buy it in the market and deliverance for our sister you don't buy it in the market for great and mighty things the lord is doing at cornerstone worship center it is god himself father we give you praise we exalt you we magnify you we declare that you are god there is no like you blessed savior we want to say thank you 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 for the newly wedded couple, I believe there was a time their heart was heavy and you just did it and today it is a testimony. They must have gone through a lot of trials but you gave them victory. I believe wine may have been insufficient but you gave them new wine. The healings of Countable that you have released in the life of your children. Deliverance. Father, we want to say thank you. For our daddy in the Lord for keeping him all these years and making him to become a vessel unto honor. We want to say thank you. For strengthening him. For visions. For dreams. We want to say thank you. To every member of the church, we want to say thank you for wonderful and mighty things you are doing for your promises for the silver jubilee we want to say thank you blessed savior all the days of our lives we keep praising your name and so lord we seal all this thanksgiving with the blood of jesus and we ask for god that all the days of our lives we will be grateful unto you even as we enter into a new month of kindness Lord, by the time we are entering July, give us more reasons to bless your name. And so, Lord, for those who will be traveling, for those who will be coming from far and near, we are praying, O oh Lord, that you will bear them on eagle's wings. Jehovah, Lord, for those who are trusting and looking unto you for something unique, even as we are hearing testimony today, that will be their portion. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, if there is anyone that their heart is heavy, even as you made your daughter to come forth to give testimony, so you will do in their lives. Amen. Those who are sick, even as you made your son to come to give testimony, so you will do in their lives. Amen. Every one of us, oh God, we pray that you will love. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to your holy name. For this new couple, we decree that beginning from now, the Lord will begin to do a new thing in your lives. Very soon, it will be celebrations yeah. of triplets, yeah. of twins, yeah. of a single child with your heart desire. Yeah. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Yeah. Please, choir, give us another song, even as. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, the Sister Fumi and King's daughters, please come and receive this wonderful lady into your midst. Another daughter of, of the King. Amen. You don't want her to be missing in this place. The women, the king's daughters, some of you come and receive her to your to your miss. Oh, you don't want her? Please. This is Mr. Fumi, leader of the women. Yes. All right, you can sing for them now to be going. Congrats. So you will talk to her later. All right, God bless. you have been doing for us. We want to say thank you most importantly for the salvation of our souls. You gave your son, Lord, to die for us and to redeem us. You showed us kindness where we were yet in sin. You died for us. You redeemed us from the clutch of the devil. Father, we say thank you. Jehovah, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege to be in your presence again this morning. Not everybody that went to bed last night is alive today. But, Lord, it has pleased you to give us life, to count us among the living. Father, we say thank you. 
Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy that has not consumed, because of which we have not been consumed. We bless your holy name for everything that you have been, you are, and what you are yet to do even in our lives in the future. Father, we bless your holy name. Please accept our thanks also in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for your son that you have used to give us the word, everyone that you have used today to bless us in one form or the other. We thank you for their lives. We pray, Lord, you will replenish their virtues in Jesus' name. Father, King of glory, we thank you for the preparation going on for the 25th anniversary of this church. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that have been given concerning your church. This church is your church, Lord. It bears your name. You are the chief cornerstone of Cornerstone Worship Center for All Nations. That is why the church is still able to stand. Father, thank you for your help. Thank you for your past help. Thank you for your present. Thank you for what you are here to do. We bless your holy name even for every member of this church, everyone that you are using to move this, your church forward. We say, Lord, bless them immensely. Let them not lack anything good in Jesus' name. Father, when you start bringing their blessings unto them, people will see it and say, yes, indeed, these are the blessings of the Lord. These ones are the ones that have been serving God faithfully. Father, reward them according to your word. Because you said you will reward everyone that serves you. Our labor of love, you said you will not, we will not be in vain. So therefore, let them see this, O oh Lord, in their lives in Jesus' name. And for as many as are here still that are trusting you for one good thing or the other, even this season, Lord, we pray, you will give them anniversary presents. You will give them those things that are trusting you for as anniversary presents. In the name of Jesus, we ask, O oh Lord, that you prepare us ready for all the events of the week. What we are not thinking of will not come and destroy that which we have planned in Jesus' name. Father, take full control of everything that we are going to do. And let your name alone, Lord, be glorified at the end of everything. We pray for Johnny Messies, for those that will be coming in from far and near. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the people that have arrived already. Father, bless them also in Jesus' name. When they are going back, they will go back with mighty testimonies also. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for fine weather in the name of Jesus. And we pray you will touch our hearts so that all of us will do this together in love and in unity. In the name of Jesus. Anyone that is lacking of anything, Lord, we pray you will make provision for them in Jesus' name. Father, as we go into the week, Lord, we pray, oh Lord, you will go with us. Watch over us as usual. In the name of Jesus. At the end of it all, Lord, let us know that even indeed we have met with you today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, precious Savior. We cover each and every one of us, including our family members, with your special, special blood. Let it protect and shield us also. In the name of Jesus. For this, Lord, and other mercies that we even cannot think of, we pray for in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The grace. Before the grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold on, please. Please hold on on the grace. We will share the grace. There's something that I forgot to tell you. And that's what I want to say before we close. You know, when you have people who love you, you should know them. One person is here that really loves us very much, that decided when she heard that we are going to do this anniversary, decided to come all the way from Britain. You know, I didn't say it, but now I'm saying it so you know the love that the pastor misses, the Victoria Fumlayer equally has for us. Okay. They are, she's one of the people that really encouraged us to be in ministry. We were in the same parish from 1994. We are still together by the grace of God. So I think it's necessary for me to let you know that people all over the world, they are coming. One of them, one of my daughters is coming from, you know, was coming from Chicago, but because of the, I think they called her for an important thing in the office. Mrs. Guela is a, are you now retired? Senior nurse, by the grace of God, by profession. Retired. 
she's not tired, she's still firing. Amen. Also, you know, in those days when there was no fuel in Nigeria, she was working with national oil. And for every member of the church, we're always going to her to get fuel. You, you know? So God has positioned some people in all your lives to be able to help you. And that's why I'm trying to say this, so that you know that God is God of mercy and uh, kindness. All right? So I want to say thank you for coming. She's going to stay with us for almost one month now because of this. She's going to the convention also with us, you know. Uh -huh. So when Chairman Evans was saying that people all over the world are coming, that's a proof. Amen. And there are others, they are worshiping with us, praying for us from very far. Uh, Pastor Shore is supposed to be here, he will be in the U.S., but we didn't tell him on time. I'm just saying that they are all praying for us, and they have us in their mind. And the Lord will be with all of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's keep on our good works. That's all I just want to point out, you know, so that you go and reflect on it. Master's partners will meet in the vestry after the service. God bless you. And one more time, the goodness of God will locate each and every one of you, even this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the grace, please. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall join the house of the Lord forever and never. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you.